guarantee that will be part of a um, part of grade, like on a board exam or something. Okay. So the first thing we do is have them um, pull their shirt, gown, whatever up. And so we will go ahead and cut you a break. But where are the real dimensions of the exam? What's the top of the exam? Xiphoid process. What's the bottom of the exam? Pubic synthesis. Yes. Right. So we're not going to have you uncover that much. But just know I that. Sports bra on, so I no, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. I, um, uh, this is demo. But, and even for the, when we do it for real, I may tell you that you don't have to have them uncovered. I may just ask you how far would you. Um, so we start with inspection. Inspection, we start with general inspection. So general inspection is just, for lack of a better, is see what you can see, right? So you just go ahead and take a peek. So we're looking for, is anything out of the midline? We're looking for um, a lack of symmetry. We're looking for scars and stuff like that. So I showed you a bunch of scars and we would talk about those. So when we do the practical, I may show you some pictures. Um, so that may part, be part of the exam. I'll put them on the TV. Um, so for instance, if you th saw three or four circles, little holes, what surgery is that? Gallbladder removal? Probably gallbladder removal. It could be other things too, but it's going to be a scope. And then we said a big center incision. What's that going to be? Abdominal. Yeah, or any, you know, that's sort of the generic scar to do anything in there. Um, scar like that? C-section. C-section or some of the other um, female reproductive uh, sort of surgeries, things like that. Okay. And so she has another thing. We'll pick on her for a second. She has a, a piercing, which you should always check out. You should make sure that there aren't any rolled up edges or infections or anything like that. Um, I didn't do it this time around. I have a whole like 25 um, uh, slides of uh, body piercings gone wrong. Yeah. I scared you that one. It makes the anal you know, rectal photos look like tame. Because I've got like three of, of uh, umbilical piercings that have gotten caught on something and torn out. And I've got one that's a nipple. Caught on oh something God. and torn out. I was gonna say. Oh that my God. <laughs> we'll, find, we'll find a way to share that with you later. I'll, I'll email it over. Email it over the summer. Yes. I'll see if I can dig them up. I don't know if they're on my computer or on my hard drive at home. Um, I pulled them out because they made everybody a little too nauseous. Um, all right. So we've inspected. We've done general inspection, right? That's not too bad. Um, now we want to do, go back and look for a couple things specifically. We want to look for organ inspection. So I would look where the liver is. I would look where I think the spleen could be enlarged um, and try to get an idea if I see anything there. Um, the other one then is uh, pulsations. Can we see her? I can. You guys might get be able to. And I have a pen light handy? You can see it if you just pen down. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, who are your pen light? Now, one of the tricks, and I haven't really talked about it this semester much, but I should have, is um, two things. Um, number one, we haven't talked about it, but talking about tangential lighting. So a lot of times, if you put a light across something, then it'll create shadows and give you a much easier chance at seeing stuff. So when I do this, I can already see her abdominal aortic pulsations easier, right? Because I can see the shadow move. The other thing you can do also, is watch the pin move. So now all of a sudden it's really super easy to see. Now that's not abnormal, um, uh, but of course if I put it down and the pin was, you know. Thank you. All right, so we did general organ, um, general organ and vascular um, observation. We didn't see anything there on inspection. Next thing we want to do is is auscultation. Now, auscultation is is something that you have to do in order, right? Um, now, in reality, let's be clear. I wouldn't have observed. I wouldn't have done inspection. I would have laid her down and started listening. I would have done my inspection while I was listening. But in testing kind of things, you want to make sure people see that you're doing both. All right. So the first thing I want to do is listen for bowel sounds. Then after that, I'm going to listen for, well, <clears throat> I'm going to do general, which is going to listen for bowel sounds. 
Um, then I'm going to do organic, so I'm listening over liver and spleen to see if I get venous hums or anything like that. And then last but not least, we'll listen to abdominal aorta, renals, iliacs, and then you'd listen to femorals too. Now, because I'm going to poke around in her belly, I actually do need to listen, right? Now, do I think I'm healthy and everything's fine? Do I think there's a problem? No. But still, before you poke in anybody's belly, you want to make sure. And maybe this is the first day of her aortic aneurysm. We just don't know it yet, so we're not going to be careless. So I heard bowel sounds in all four quadrants. If you paid attention, I had to listen for a little bit. And then I moved here, and I was hearing it before I even got the scope on her skin. <laughs> and then here was the same thing. So as long as I heard bowel sounds, I'm good. That means all of her small intestine and large intestine is doing what it needs to be doing. There isn't any sort of paralytic ileus kind of thing. Now we'll go back and listen to organs. Um, kidneys, eh, you're not going to hear anything anyway, so I think you could skip that. But you definitely want to listen over liver and where you think a spleen might enlarge. So nothing here, and actually was getting bowel sounds here, which means it's not spleen, right? Spleen would have pushed all that stuff out of the way. Now, abdominal aorta. Reno. Another little trick when you're listening to these, if you start to hear something you're not quite certain what it is, then you could palpate her pulse. Any kind of brewery would go with her pulse, right? So sometimes you'll hear something that's like, mm, is that bowel? Is that, I'm not sure what that is. If you palpate pulse to go with it, then you can distinguish vascular from other stuff. If you haven't had a heart attack, PVC is no big deal. It's just interesting. I didn't expect you to have one. What would that sound like? Um, well, it was when I was palpating your pulse. Mm -hmm. So your pulse is regular, like B, 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 B. And then a PVC is like B, 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 B. So little cell somewhere in your ventricle gets a little excited, goes too quick. So you get a, a beat and another beat, and then you have to compensate, so you sort of skip a beat. So people, if they feel it, they usually feel the next beat because you have an extra um, filling of the ventricle, and then you'll get compensation, right? You'll get a nice stronger contraction. Okay. So vasco sounds are perfectly fine, and like PVCs in people that don't have heart problems are fine. So I'm not, don't, you don't have to worry about um, uh, let's see. So I did that. Now what do I want to do? I can do percussion um, or I can do palpation. Um, I think I showed you guys. I think most textbooks show you palpation first. I think percussion is actually better. So we want to do general. Um, you guys learned to do this little circle pattern. That's fine. Um, I always taught it and learned to do midline, midclavicular, and uh, anterior axillary, right? Um, either is fine, I don't care which. Um, some textbooks will even show just quadrants for the general part, right? Any of those three is fine. General is just 
see what you can see, right? Hear what you can hear. Next, we want to do the um, part for the um, uh, organs. So uh, I'm not going to get any percussion out of the kidneys, really. So what we want to do is percuss for liver size and spleen size. So remember, liver, we're going to come high. I'm already at liver. So we want to come down until it changes. Now this would be a case where what I needed her to do, and I'm not going to do it, what I needed her to do was go ahead and pull up because her liver is high enough up that I want to get up there. Then what I want to do is come below. and changes about there. So her liver is a normal span, right? So we want to look at the liver span in the midclavicular line. I think that's fine. So then the other one we talked about is just palpate, just percussing at a spot here, right? We come down in the um, anterior axillary line and, and towards the end of the uh, last rib interspace. Take a nice deep breath in. And now let it all out. And we would listen for the sound to change, right? So if she had took a nice deep breath in, as she did, then that should push an enlarged spleen down into that space, and it would sound dull. What happened when she took her breath in, it sounded more resonant, so it was lung, right? I got a nice lung sound. When she let it all out, it was when she breathed out, it was all dull. That's because lung was gone now, and now it was filled with guts, right? Other stuff. Um, so that's how it sounds when it's normal. It would be sort of the opposite, right, if she had an enlarged spleen. Take a nice deep breath in, spleen would now cover that spot up, and you'd hit it, and you'd get that flat sound. Then she'd exhale, and you would go ahead and maybe get, you might get to, um, uh, stomach or nothing, right? So her spleen is not enlarged. Yay. Good for your spleen. Yay, spleen. Um, so we did per percussion, um, and now we want to do palpation, right? Because there's no percussion, there's no vascular percussion. You can't percuss with that. Um, we could, you're just not going to get anything. Um, yeah. Uh, percuss is carotid. <laughs> Got some bilateral for 20 minutes. Um, see what happens. Um, now we want to do palpation. So general palpation, um, we would ask the patient if they have any pain. If they do, you want to start away from the pain. You know, pain do. So it doesn't matter where we start. The only thing I'd suggest is um, have a plan. Start always in the same so you don't forget. And the first one we want to do is go around and we're feeling for the muscular layer. So this is when you're going to get trigger points and that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm have a little muscular finding. Hold on. Right. Everything's fine. Now I'm going to go back, and this is going to be uncomfortable, right? The first one isn't that bad because you're just doing muscle. This one now I'm going to palpate deeper, and this isn't so fun. So I'm not going to do it the way I would normally do it. I don't want to torture her here, but now we're trying to feel past muscle, and we're trying to get any kind of pain we're going to get in organs or anything like that. Masses, you, you name it. Right. So now let's say right here she goes, ow, oh, that's killing me. Tighten your abs for me. I would repalpate. If it was something in the muscular layer, it should still hurt. If when she's contracted, if it's deeper than that, this should make it better. Okay. So that's a way to get an idea is this here or here, right? You get an idea about depth. Um, then we do uh, organ palpation, right? So palpation for liver. Um, I think I showed you that. I really like this because I think our fingers are really good. And sometimes I'll even go back. So what I'm looking is for smooth, even, not enlarged. And if you palpate on the side where there is no liver, then you're like, oh, well, yeah, I am palpating liver. I can feel it. Um, the way that it's taught is to do overhand knife edge, which is good too, because then you can do Murphy's sign at the same time. So take a nice deep breath in, let it all out, sneak in under her ribs as best you can, take another deep breath, and if she stops breathing, that would be a positive Murphy sign, and it would be positive for what? What kind of things might she have? Hepatitis. Hepatitis and? Gold stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah, right. Excellent. Um, next is then going for spleen. Um, I really preferred the way that was shown on the Stanford tape as it is on both the textbooks. I like that tape better than I like... Mosby or Bates, they come down and start with a real light palpation, have the patient breathe, 
have the patient breathe, and what you're looking for is a enlarged spleen to push up against your fingers. Now, I did disagree with this because he's seeing sick people. We're seeing well people. Um, so he's seeing people who've already had years of splenic enlargement. We're seeing people who may be the first day of their spleen getting big. So I think there is a reason for us to give the overhanded pressure, push down in, and take a nice deep breath and see if we get anything. The other thing I'm showing up with the overhand, I did agree with him, I don't think you need the hand over there, um, but your any kind of part four is gonna look for you to do it that way. Last but not least would be kidney. And so you're gonna come up here. And now instead of going that way, you're kind of going straight down and you're having the patient breathe or you're doing like a little blotment where you're pushing your hand in to see if it bounces on it. Breathe. Nope, nothing. All right. Last but not least, you guys can continue to do um, abdominal aorta the way you do it. You guys do it by manual. Um, I've like it and learned it this way, so that's what I'm used to, is slide off rectus, go down, pull midline, and palpate for the pulsations. Bimanual's fine too. I don't, either is fine, okay? Um, am I done? Yeah.